Hi, I'm Grace Truitt. I'm a student at Brigham Young University studying art history, and I am a research assistant with the Book of Mormon Art Catalog. And today I'm joined by Dr. Heather Belknap. Dr. Belknap? Hi. Yes, I'm a professor of art history and curatorial studies at Brigham Young University. Been here for 22 years. And I have intersecting interests in women artists and religious art. And seven or eight years ago, I started working in earnest on Latter-day Saint art and its tradition and also uh, local art, Utah artists. And so Mabel Frazier is one of my favorite artists to talk about. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. We are excited to talk about this piece. It covers 3rd Nephi 11, and this is Mabel Pearl Frazier's piece, Christ Among the Nephites, from 1954. It's a rather sizable oil on canvas um, structure, and we are talking about Frazier, who is a female artist from the United States, specifically Utah. Um, so, Dr. Belknap, please contextualize this piece for us, if you will, within larger LDS theology and art, and also within Fraser's life and her oeuvre. Sure. So, uh, mid-century, we have a number of artists like Minerva Teichert, Arnold Freeberg, who are embarking on doing large-scale Book of Mormon-themed uh, paintings. Uh, and this was also true for Mabel Fraser. This was her first and only uh, work of, about the Book of Mormon, at least that has remained with us to this day, and certainly uh, of this size. And it seems that in 1947, either she or uh, approached her bishop, or her bishop approached her, we're not quite sure, about doing a large mural for the local ward house in Salt Lake. I think it was the 33rd ward. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, it was agreed that that would be a, a wonderful and welcoming thing, and so she embarked on the study of this, and that meant going down to Mexico, where she went uh, on at least two occasions because she was part of this generation that was interested in the um, you know finding these Book of Mormon sites where they were in Central America, imagining you know, what the kinds of temples um, that where they had worshipped and the spaces where they had um, had settled um, and the like. And so she spent seven years and $2,000 of her own money uh, before this work was completed in 1954. And then it goes into um, the Ward House. And uh, as I said, this was part of this, this moment of, of embracing not just our own history, because there have been historical representations of the saints, um, but of our own scripture of the Book of Mormon. And Minerva Teichert from 1949 to 1951 had, had embarked on this project, not a commission. Uh, she had hoped that the church would purchase all of those works uh, of a number of Book of Mormon paintings. And then Arnold Freeberg had been asked to do a number of illustrations by the general primary president that ultimately made it into our into our uh, one of our versions of the Book of Mormon. So um, she was part of that part of that generation. She uh, valued that that historicity so much. I was just going to read a uh, a little bit about uh, what she said about her travels. This was in a, an interview that she did in 1977 with Richard Ullman, who was the curator of our church history museum at the time. And so she says that after she got this commission, I, I took off for Mexico, Mexico to go down and see the old buildings. I've been to Palenque three times. The first time I heard of Palenque, I knew there was supposed to be a chapel there. I didn't know what it was for, but I got down there. And that first time I was only there two days. There, sure enough, was a temple of Jesus Christ that today we could go through and perform exactly the same ceremonies that we do in the temple here and in all the 16 temples over the world. Uh, and, and then she goes on to talk about going into South America and Central America, looking at the architecture and actually measuring because she wants to have that kind of accuracy. So you can see uh, in the background uh, of this painting of Christ Among the Nephites that she includes one of these Mesoamerican uh, temples that she had sketched. And she also spent quite a bit of time sketching the landscape, uh, studying some of the costume, the traditional costume. Uh, that folks uh, would wear, and then you know imagines this sacred moment where Christ appears uh, to the Nephites and is teaching them and the way that they receive this. 
Now, you were wondering about um, the symbolism. We were talking about this uh, earlier. She did not leave any records as to what these things meant. Uh, but apparently she spent a lot of time telling church members who were in the ward about this. So every, every Sunday, uh, I, hopefully after the meetings, right? Maybe in between meetings. Although back in 1977, we were meeting multiple times. <laughs> so she would become a fixture next to this painting and anyone that would be willing to stop and talk to her, she would use this um, to teach them about this important event um, in the history of humankind and in the Book of Mormon of when Christ uh, appears not just appears to the Nephites, but is among the Nephites. And that's something that she's wanting to show here. So um, we do see pottery that it would be connected to um, her studies. Uh, yeah. And you know a few of these other kinds of emblems, it's possible. Um, I, I, I think maybe she thinks that this is a Leahona sort of um, object that's at the, <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the base. You know, there are other various things, not very uh, clear in terms of uh, its its meaning or its iconography, but that at least gave a sense of of this place and this kind of historical accuracy that she was um, after. One of the things that I think is important is she wanted to make sure that people knew that this was Christ, and yeah. so she includes not a halo, but he is radiating these well these rays like a, like he is the sun, the S U N instead of the sun S O N. Um, of God, and so um, that really um, helps us understand, you know, his, um, what we're looking at here is not just a, a man, but that this is Christ our Lord. I love that. Her dedication to accuracy is um, incredibly impressive, especially as she portrays many of the people in their stages of acceptance. Right. And it sort of fits into that narrative of her um, allowing this piece to be her missionary work as she shared it with those that she intended to share it with the members of her ward. Right. So it's such a spectacular piece. Right. And she did envision this too, as you were saying, of you know, various stages of coming to accept Christ, uh, where there are representations of Nephites and Lamanites and this idea of living in harmony. So it was right. something that she was trying to promote through her art. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, will you be willing to share your personal reaction to this piece? Sure. So I'm the first to confess that it's a bit awkwardly painted. <laughs> it's um, the sort of thing that you can, you can understand why it didn't stay in the building forever, which was something that Mabel Fraser felt very sad about, oh. <laughs> that, um, that as they were doing renovations, they, they took it down for cleaning, and then it was, and it was never placed there again. Uh, she was a better landscape artist than, than of the figure. And so certainly if you're looking at this in terms of kind of technical standpoint, it's not, um, it's not fabulous. <laughs> but in terms of her earnestness of showing that the thing that she was the, the two things that she was the most devoted to were her religion and her art, and especially, you know, being able to bring people um, to Christ through the arts. This is something that she wrote about extensively in the Young Women's uh, Journal and in, in other places. That that informs my experience with this. And so uh, as we see Christ, who is reaching out with both hands to welcome all, um, to um, attest to his divinity, to his um, resurrection, and uh, that he's surrounded by those who are... Um, recognize his holiness and are um, animated and are filled with hope. This is one of the, the things that, that I think is most um, effective at, um, at portraying. But again, but again, you know, one can understand maybe why this was not included uh, in, uh, in other representations of the Book of Mormon and, and the like because it, it is more of a personal kind of testimony and rather than one that um, would, would be easily understood by many. Well, I think that's why it's so important too, yep. her, as it's approachable and right. it's endearing because of its maybe imperfections and its asymmetry. It's true, <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. And uh, this is a work that's not always on display, but it is at the Springfield Museum of Art. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Belknap. Is there anything that you would like to add? No, this has been really lovely, and I'm grateful for the opportunity and glad that more people are learning about uh, the various kinds of art that's been made to help deepen our uh, understanding and engagement of the scriptures, especially the Book of Mormon. Thank you so Thanks. much.
Thank you all for joining. We hope you enjoyed this session of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog series, Behold.